welcome to the Life After Plus One podcast, where we turn life's lemons into delightful lemonade. Get ready for inspiring stories, uplifting conversations, and all the tips and tricks to rock your single parent journey with style. I'm your host, Leanne, and it's time to embrace the adventure of Life After Plus One. So let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome to Life After Plus One. I'm your podcast host, Leanne, your relationship coach and your single parent mentor. Today, we're here to talk about setting boundaries. But before we dive into that, I just want to say a huge shout out to everyone that's been on board so far with this podcast. She's still quite new. She's a baby. She's just been launched and I'm loving the feedback and support. So thank you everyone for getting on board. There is so much more amazing content to come. So stay posted for all of that. And just thank you again. If you have any questions or want to provide any feedback for any upcoming shows, feel free to shoot me a message on my Instagram page. My DMs are open. So feel free to message me there at life after plus one. But for now, let's dive into setting boundaries. Okay setting boundaries. What are boundaries and how do we set them? Well, first thing I want to point out is setting boundaries is nothing confrontational and it's not about creating conflict. If anything, it's about doing the opposite. It's about trying to eliminate any conflict or drama and having a clear open channel for communication between you and your ex as to what both of your expectations are in regards to your parenting, your co-parenting situation and respecting the space of each other and your time time as a parent. Now, when you've been in a relationship together for so long, it can get easy to get stuck in a habit of just relying on the other person. But once you've broken up, that's all changed. So you've got to get used to doing things separately and making it clear as to where your expectations are and where your boundaries are. What your Do you accept them coming and going from your house because you guys used to live there together? Do you accept them just to still continue to do all these school pickups and drop-offs and all the school activities? because that's what you used to do. You know, situations have now changed or circumstances have now changed and you may now be a primary carer and you've now got to take on all these extra duties. So you've got to now implement some sort of procedure or some sort of guidelines that can put in place where you stand and how's it going to work from here on in between both of you to make it easier for all of you as a whole to make the process of co-parenting easier with the kids and amongst you and the other parent. Now, sometimes quite often this can be put in place if you're going through court and you've got court orders or mediation, a lot of the main stuff will be put in place from that. Now, I'm not going to touch any legal sides of that. That's not my expertise. I'm not a lawyer, but I will touch base on setting boundaries, but basic stuff that may not be covered in the legalities of it all. And also some people prefer not to go to court. They like to try and work things out amongst themselves, which is great. I never went to court. We worked it out between ourselves. It wasn't an easy process to do that, but it can be done. So when you are working it out between yourselves and there are no court orders in place, you do need to put something down, you know, or just put something in place as to what you're looking at or what you're expecting going forward. Now, when I say that, you don't necessarily need to have something in writing saying, this is what I want. I want this, 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 and this. It's not a formal document. It's having the confidence to really speak up for yourself. And that's something as well that can be quite difficult in this stage because I know in my first period of the breakup, I probably didn't have a lot of confidence. You're confused, you're lost, especially when it was something that wasn't a healthy breakup. If it's a mutual breakup, you know, you might be in a very different headspace. If it didn't end in a nice way, confidence is probably not top on your list at the moment. So, you know, you've got to focus on what your needs are, what you're wanting to get out of this. Now, it's not about sitting down having a battle, having a fight, oh, but you did this, you get this. That's not what setting boundaries are. If anything, that is creating conflict and that's what we're trying to avoid by having this because boundaries are about setting healthy boundaries. It's not about starting tit for tat. It's about working well for all of you. And it also works with the whole transitioning, you know, swapping kids from one house to the other house, pickups, drop-offs, times, locations. Not everything may be in writing already. This may be something that you guys need to negotiate. So just working out what works best for you. You might have one parent that expects the other parent to do all the pickups and drop-offs. Well, that's not really fair, is it? So it's about being fair and both parties coming together equally. And that's what we're talking about here. 
being fair for both. So how do we do that? It can be quite difficult, especially if you've come from a toxic situation or you're dealing with a co-parent who is very manipulative or very narcissistic. They're not the kinds of partners or sorry, ex-partners who like to cooperate they do tend to make the situation quite difficult unnecessarily and quite often you get ex-partners who get in revenge mode it's like I'm not doing that because they want this or I'm not giving to them no way well at the end of the day you've got to take into consideration your relationship has ended but it's all about the transitioning of the kids and the looking after the kids and so they're the ones that take priority in the situation it's not about what happened between you and your ex it's not about who hurt who it's not about why did you do that it's now about we've now ended how can we make this work to create as minimal issues or conflict around the kids and that's it and it's very easy to get in that headspace of well no I'm not giving in to them they were assholes or no I'm not doing this but you've got to remember that when you've broken up with an ex-partner if you didn't have kids involved you would have no further contact with them so you've got to remember that the only reason you're still in contact with this person is because they're a parent to your kids and that's it that's where it lies There's no other connection between you and the other parent besides the kids. So that's what needs to be taken priority here. Not, oh, you upset me or I can't believe you did this or blah, blah, blah. You know what? It is hard. There's probably a lot of hurt. There's a lot of anger. That's something that's got to be dealt with. But your ex is not going to help you get over that. You've got to get over that in your own time. And this process here is about setting boundaries, not about setting revenge. So really setting boundaries is really just about not being walked all over. When something happens or your ex does something that's in relation to the children, instead of sitting there getting pissed off about it or messaging them with angry texts or calling your friends go, they're an arsehole, they did this. It's about sitting down and communicating with them. Okay, listen, every Sunday when you drop the kids off, you're an hour or two hours late. What can we do to change this? Can you maybe start messaging me? Should we look at changing the drop off time? What's going on? Because you can't just keep turning up late without letting me know. That's setting boundaries working out an agreement okay they're going to be late they're in the wrong for not notifying you but hey put something in place you've either got to start messaging me to let me know and give me a bit of a heads up that you're running late or you've got to make more of an effort to drop the kids off at the time that we've agreed so that in a way is setting a boundary okay you don't agree with the concept being late you're not going to sit there and ignore it you want to speak up and say something but you don't want to be confrontational about it find out what's happening okay you don't want to go up and okay listen asshole why are you late every week what the fuck is going on I've, I'm really over this that is going to cause them to react and go listen bitch I'm over you I'll drop them when I'm ready okay you don't want to approach a situation like that because if you approach your ex in a confrontational way highly likely they'll respond back in a similar way we don't want that find out why listen what's going on okay what can we do to change this you've either got to start respecting me by messaging me and letting me know or you've got to make more of a conscious effort to get them back home on time with me and it's not just about drop off like anything's related to the kids maybe they've promised to purchase something for the kids and they haven't done it and it's now fallen on you just anything it's really just about speaking up but speaking in a way that's not going to start a war speaking up speaking your mind and saying hey this is not on this is getting a bit bullshit now you're a parent let's work out what's happening now in many situations there will be times where you've got to pick your battles and there will be times when you've got to bite your tongue because quite often speaking up in with certain uh, scenarios or certain types of people they won't even give a shit what you're saying but putting it out there and just being clear as to you know what no This is not on. And I'll give you an example. Something that I did. My ex was in a similar situation to what I just explained then about drop-off time. You know, he used to drop off on Sunday nights and it was just very scattered. One afternoon he dropped them off at four o'clock. I wasn't home and he never notified me. There are times he dropped them off at seven, eight o'clock at night. And it was just so inconsistent. And then Friday afternoons, I would pick my daughter up from school and then he would pick her up from my house on Friday nights. And again, that pickup time was very inconsistent. There was no set time. It was all over the place. And it got to the point, it was like, you know what? This is this is messy. I'm constantly having to sit around and wait and it's not working for me. So I put in place a new system where he now picks her up from school on Friday afternoon and then he drops her back at school on the 
Monday morning and then I will get my daughter from school on the Monday afternoon. So there's no worry about me having to sit around and wait. There's no worry about what times. There's no having to message each other back and forth and saying what's going on because that's it. There's a school up on Friday and then the school drop off on Monday morning and then I'll grab my daughter on Monday afternoon. And it's so smooth and it's so easy. And now because of this, there's minimal communication needed between us, which is less chance of any arguments happening. So it's a win-win for both sides, if you ask me. So again, it's not about starting a fight or, you know, being an asshole. It's about just saying, you know what, this isn't working. Let's look at something different. And obviously every person in every situation will be approached differently because not everyone's the same and not every breakup is the same and not every situation's the same. So you've got to kind of pick your battles and work out where you stand with your ex. Are you on a good communication level with them where you can say, hey, listen, we need to maybe start looking at something different here or is it just going to be a matter of saying, okay, this is what's happening. It's just not on. It's messy. And you know what? And if you can do it verbally amongst each other, amazing. Do it. Sit down, have a chat and go, listen, we need to make this whole process a little smoother if not if it's not as healthy as that where you can sit down and talk to your ex then put it in a text put it in an email just try doing it in a way that's going to create as minimal conflict as possible and again I understand that there are a lot of people that are not going to cooperate in a way that's not confrontational I know I've been in that situation every message I used to always send even if it was something nice it would come back with an attack. So I get it. I know what that's like and it's not fun and it's not healthy. And in those are the situations where you need to pick your battles and you also need to set your boundaries. So that's why for me, my arrangement that I've now got in place is a dream because I love that there's minimal contact because our contact was not healthy. It, like I said, I could say the nicest message possible and he would perceive it in a way that was me having a dig. So just remember when you are trying to put something in place for the next, try and be as neutral as possible and as hard as that can be and you possibly thinking in your head I just don't want to be talking to this person right now try and be as neutral drop your emotions drop the ego drop any issues that you have because again you're not chit-chatting to them about what happened in your past or you're not chit-chatting to them about your relationship you're chit-chatting to them because of the children and that's it so what do you do if your boundaries are not being respected okay again I've been there it's not fun You just constantly get walked all over and you get taken the piss out of. It's a difficult one. It's hard. And again, it depends on its situation. Have you been to mediation? Do you have court orders in place? Is there something you can fall back on? But the biggest thing to remember when you are trying to put something in place is to not engage in additional conversation if you're not in a healthy co-parenting relationship. Do not engage in back and forth tit for tat because I guarantee what you're hoping to achieve will not happen if you start engaging in unnecessary conversation. Keep it clear, keep it concise and keep it as neutral as possible. You might message them and say, hey, listen, I need you to start picking up the kids on school on Fridays. It's just not working in my schedule. I've got work commitments. They may come back and say, oh, but what are you doing? Going out and partying or something like that. They may engage in other conversation that's related to your personal life. Don't interact. Don't engage in that. You need to keep it purely about what you're messaging about. Don't start going, oh, well, you shouldn't worry about what I'm doing. This is my life, blah, blah, blah. You are not in a situation where you need to now explain your personal life to your ex. It's none of the business. And a lot of the times when they're asking you questions about your personal life, usually it's because they're jealous and they want to know or they see that you're having fun. They're like, holy shit, what are they up to? Why aren't I on board? So the biggest advice is just don't engage. It's like one of the things I always say, if like if you see a barking dog and you go up and tease it, That dog's going to keep barking. They're not going to stop. If you're giving the shits to a barking dog, they're going to come back yapping at you and they're probably going to come jumping on you. And as much as this might not be a nice comparison, but if your ex comes back to you and starts attacking, 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 it's like that angry dog. And if you keep teasing that angry dog back, they're going to keep biting back, aren't they? So again, it may not be a nice comparison, but it's true. If your ex is that barking dog and you don't stop teasing and you don't let it go and you just keep teasing and teasing and teasing, then that barking dog's going to keep going. So the only way to keep that situation as calm as possible 
is to not tease the barking dog. So only engage in questions or comments that's related to what you're trying to address. So like I just said a second ago, if you're wanting to address a pickup time or an activity for the kids or something, and they respond back with something completely different about your social life or something you've been doing or the way you look or anything that's unrelated to what you've asked, don't acknowledge it. If they mention something that you've asked in that text, they've responded to it slightly, but thrown in other comments in between, just respond to what you're needing. That's it. Don't interact with anything else that's not necessary because it's only going to fuel the fire. And I guarantee you, I am not condoning this toxic behavior from anyone. I promise you that. But sometimes this is the best way to handle it by not engaging, just being calm, being clear, being concise. Because also certain people, a certain narcissistic and manipulative people love seeing their ex rattled up. They love giving them the shits. They love seeing them angry and they love just bringing them down and, you know, kicking them in the guts. So the only way to get through that is to not show that you're bothered. If they see that you're angry, you're sad or upset, they will thrive on that. I promise you. So try to show that it doesn't faze you. Try to not interact or react with any comments that's not related to what you're wanting to achieve with that conversation. And most importantly, don't engage in any other conversation that's not related to the kids. Now, I'm not saying all situations are like this because there could be quite a lot of healthy situations out there where you guys get along really well. I love that and I'm so happy for you. I wish there were more situations like this, but unfortunately, not everyone is. So for the healthy co-parents out there, you probably don't even need to worry about this. Setting boundaries is probably the last of your priorities because if you guys get along, perfect. But there are people that aren't so lucky and have to really struggle on a daily basis to form any kind of healthy communication with their ex. Now, people in a healthy relationship still may need to set boundaries. Uh, You may get so uh, friendly with each other that the other person may forget and start, you know, overstepping the boundaries or may start getting used to old habits and start falling back into that trap. And you may be like, oh, no, buddy, this is not on. We've broken up. And they may just start, you know, like they may just start coming and going from the house because that's where they used to live. And it's like, well, no, this isn't on you don't live here anymore so you know there obviously will be boundaries in some extent but obviously it would not be as difficult for ones that are in the unhealthy co-parenting relationships now the other thing to remember is to not chop and change things don't be inconsistent with something that you're trying to put in place like don't just one week and say listen we need to put something in place let's do say you do school pick up on Friday and then the next week you change and go oh, actually no I'll do pick up this week and like that not on keep it consistent stick by your word don't be so choppy and changey unless you've got something on or the plans or something's happened at the last minute yeah things will change it's always going to happen but just remember to be consistent because if you're going to start changing things all the time not only will you piss your ex off where you, you know you probably end up having a another argument you're just going to confuse the kids as well so try and be consistent with something that you're going to put in place So they're the main things that you need to really look at when you're wanting to put healthy boundaries in place with your co-parent, okay? And it's about just making a healthy transition and making sure they respect your personal space, your personal life and your time. So go in there knowing what it is you're wanting to achieve, what outcome you're looking for. Be confident, even if you need to sit down and think of an action plan first, instead of just going there and going, oh shit, I didn't really put a lot of thought into this. Get a little bit of an action plan first, think about what you want to do and approach it with confidence and again you don't have to discuss it in person you can do it in text you can do it in email but just be clear be concise and be consistent and most importantly remain neutral don't let your emotions get involved try not to start any arguments and only engage in conversation that's related to what you're wanting to discuss okay like I said if something comes up in the conversation that's not related to what you're wanting to achieve ignore it It's easy for them to try and rattle you. It's easy for them to try and stir the pot. And a lot of the times, that's what a lot of them are trying to do. Don't engage, don't respond. And most importantly, don't take it personally. Take it with a grain of salt. Ugh, whatever, they've said that again. I've heard this a million times before. It's not about proving a point because I can promise you now, if you're trying to prove a point to your ex, they're gonna wanna prove a point back. It's a lose, lose battle. You're not gonna achieve anything. So finally, be clear, be concise with what you want, be consistent and be confident and do not engage in unnecessary conversation that is going to spark the conversation to go in a downward spiral. 
because you're just going to go into a downward spiral emotionally if that's what happens, okay? And most importantly, one thing I didn't touch on before, when you're setting boundaries, you're also setting a good impression for the kids. It's like, oh, wow, look at mom setting up for herself or look at dad go. You know, it's showing the kids that, you know what, it's okay to stand up for yourself. And you're also teaching the kids some values and their self-respect and it's teaching them to have that high level of self-worth knowing, you know what, I do deserve better and I do deserve to speak up to myself. So just remember everything you do is being watched by the kids. They see everything and what their behavior is and how the kids behave and interact is usually a reflection from what they get from their parents. So make sure you're setting a good example for them. Know that, you know what, I'm worth speaking up for myself. If if you want your kids to do that in the situation, you've got to lead by example. Put yourself first, stand your ground. And remember, it's about setting healthy boundaries, not about having an attack or having a fight. Thank you, everyone. I really hope you got something from this. Also, guys, just a reminder, my Instagram DMs are open. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, shoot it through at life after plus one. I would love to hear from you. And yes, I will reply. If you did get something from this podcast and you did enjoy it, jump on below and give a star rating and a review. I would love to have your feedback. Also, if you after any additional support, jump on my website, lifeafterplus1.com. I've got some services available there to offer some support through your breakup journey. Thank you again, everyone everyone. I love your support and I cannot wait to be in your ears again next week. And until then, here's to inspiring you on your single parent journey. Thank you. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on the Life After Plus One podcast. If you loved what you heard today and looking for some further support, then jump onto our website, lifeafterplusone.com. Plus, don't forget to check out our Instagram page for further resources and inspo. You can find all the links in the show notes. And remember, you're not alone on this path. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, keep thriving, keep growing, and keep exploring your amazing life after plus one.